What is going on guys? Today we're in Georgetown, Penang. As you can see, it is quite touristy here, but that's what we were expecting. We're going past this nice looking temple. We have a lot of tourists, these little kind of, I think these like tricycles. There's a lot of vehicles. We're trying to navigate our way through the streets. <laughs> and we're coming on to Armenian Street. And what we're trying to find is street art. So a lot of people come to Penang for the street art. It's probably one of the most touristy things to do here in, in Penang. But uh, don't get put off by the tourists because the buildings are really beautiful as well. Very old style buildings. You see a lot of these kind of like little shops, cute little pictures like that. Everyone is wanting to take photos of the street art so you can't really enjoy the street art because all the tourists are taking photos like here this is the most famous one this bike and the uh, the children there and uh, yeah we're not gonna wait around for taking photos with the street art we'll just enjoy it from a distance but uh, I think that one's the most popular one here uh, in Georgetown but there is a lot more to see Okay, so we're having to navigate this weird kind of intersection here. It looks actually really nice going down here. Do we can go down here? But look at this uh, fire station. Now that for me is more interesting than the street art. It's very beautiful. But we're gonna try and go down here. So we just stumbled on this kind of interesting art here. And actually there's like graffiti here on the left. It's interesting, it feels like they really want to make out a graffiti of everything that is in the city. So now there's the graffiti of the fire station. Yeah, actually, I think like there's kind of the attraction here is they just pop up street food, uh, street art, not street food, and also street food all over the, uh, the kind of town. Uh, but it does bring, I mean, the tourists can kind of get a little bit annoying and we are a tourist, so can't really have too much to complain about, but I think we're heading towards the water right now. We've come to the Chu Jetty, which actually starts just here. And uh, you can see the wooden planks. I think beneath us, there's actually water. It's built on stilts, this entire kind of jetty. Almost like a village. Let's go down here. This area looks very, like the entrance here and here. It's a little bit, uh, a little bit touristy. So they, they try to capitalize on the tourists coming to the jetty by trying to sell them kind of touristy stuff. So we're going to try and avoid that and go. This looks quite nice though. Gives you a little bit of perspective into how people live. And I think this is a predominantly Chinese community who have been living here for quite a while. So you see here guys, there's water all down there. You've got all these stilts that this whole settlement, this jetty is built on. <laughs> so this uh, jetty was built for the early Chinese settlers here who were fishermen and traders, which makes sense because it's very close to the water. You can see down there, the stilts and the water. And we're actually just over here by the ocean. It's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> So they must, these are the fishing boats here, it looks like so this is where they would uh, they'd live here on the jetty and then they would start work here either as a fisherman or a trader. Just the POV of what it's like to walk through the clan jetty. That noise in the background is an arcade. They actually have arcade game machines on here. Check this street out, out, guys. We have a swing just there. It's kind of like wedged into the wall. And these two kids here. This building is really in interesting. It's kind of like gentrified inside. Let's go have a look inside. Oh, I want to show this uh, street art actually. It's gentrified from the inside, but looks the actual old building has not been changed at all. They've even got these old doors here. Let's head on inside. Hello. 
you can see it's a really kind of cool vibe in here kind of like a retro vibe we've got these lanterns here cafe inside of there I love, pl I love places like this yeah. I could also see that on the way we are passing by a lot of um, like really nice coffee places mm -hmm. and uh, places to have some food yeah the co I think there's lots of it's like a coffee shop vibe yeah. here in Georgetown hey guys we are at little India you can see the sign over here it says little India you can hear the Indian music in the uh, background. We've been transported to India. <laughs> the smells, the sounds. Oh, we're on the start on the road. Just like we're in India. So we're looking to get a drink here. It's really hot. Really, really hot right now. It's around 11 in the morning. And uh, you can hear more Indian music. That's a uh, sorry shop. And it's not uncommon to just walk on the roads here because the pavement, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> the pavements are uh, always obstructed. It's quite frustrating actually. So you'll end up seeing a lot of people just walking on the, uh, on the roads. But we're on the hunt for a drink right now. Can't see any, uh, most of these places along here are Selling saris, the so Indian dresses. And you can see these flowers here. I'm really enjoying this uh, area of Penang. No bias. I, it's not because I'm Indian. I was born in the UK, but. Uh, it seems a lot more peaceful and easier to walk on than uh, the places we've been to earlier. But uh, you can see, wherever there's Indian people, there's going to be jewelers. They do love their gold. Well, we do love our gold. See all the fruits here, very fresh. I'm going to go for a banana milkshake. Carolina? I'm going to go for the apple and celery. Apple and celery. Hello. Uh, one banana milkshake, one apple and celery juice. Oh, there's got the celery there yep. and uh, the apples are already kind of cut up right there I get the green one and this is our view we've got some uh, kind of chanting in the background How does it taste? Oh, it's quite sweet. Yeah? I think it's because of the syrup. So you can taste the apple, but the celery is very uh, mm. fine. Oh, that is good though. It's really nice. It's very refreshing. Oh, and yeah. The ice as well. I'm so happy with the choice. Super refreshing. I think they added some kind of sweet sugar syrup, which. Uh, Maybe we could have avoided, but uh, yeah, it but does. Actually, it compliments it in a nice way. It tastes way. really good. Yeah, it tastes it tastes really good. Now we're just waiting for my banana milkshake, which I think he's just loading up there. Thank you, my friend. We have got our drinks. I got my banana milkshake here. Let's give this a whirl. Mmm. Super tasty, refreshing, sweet, like a banana milkshake should be. I think they used uh, condensed milk. I think so. I think they used condensed milk. You can see here, it's very colorful here in Little India. Got like the tropical vibes. I think so far, Little India has been the uh, kind of most beautiful looking part. Mm. Although the place where we started, uh, Armenian Street was pretty, pretty beautiful with the old buildings. But it's very interesting to see a community here. Different sounds, different smells. You see a lot of Indian people, of course. 
interesting to see that in a different country. So on the other side of this kind of wall is the Prankin Mansion, which has this distinguished kind of green color to the building. So we went to the entrance and it cost uh, 25 ringgits to go inside. So we're on a bit of a budget. We're traveling for a long time. So we don't really want to be spending, uh, I don't know, 50, 50 ringgits. <laughs> on the entrance uh, maybe we're making a mistake you know, let us know in the comments but i've got a feeling uh, just a lot of tourists come here and go inside and it might not be uh might not be worth it for uh, for us so this roundabout here you'll come to the queen victoria memorial clock tower so this clock tower was built in 1897 Chat GPT told me that anyway, <laughs> and it was to commemorate uh, Queen Victoria's uh, Diamond Jubilee. And at the time, she was the Queen, and she was also the Empress of uh, of the Indian, I guess, like the Indian Empire. So uh, a lot of uh, Malaysia, you'll see influence of the British because of past colonization, which is not a surprise considering the British were everywhere. You might hear from my voice, I am British, but uh, my grandparents were Indian. Well, they were born in India. My, my parents are Indian, but they were born in Africa. So, a uh, <laughs> bit of a strange one. Um, I mean, I guess colonization was great for the, the British people. Maybe not so great for the rest of the world. But right now, we're at Fort Cornwallis. You can see this wall. I think, uh, having a look at the reviews, I don't think there was too much hype about this place. I think it seemed like the, it might be a bit disappointing. I don't know. Did you uh, do any research on like uh, what people were saying? Um, that is old. <laughs> that is old? <laughs> yes, uh, it looks like it's somewhere. Century. It, it looks like somewhere where you probably have to pay to go in, right? Let's see. Yeah. yeah we're trying to avoid places where you have to pay to get in because it's. Uh, yeah, it's like a tourist price and usually it's not really worth it and you just come out of it kind of disappointed. But uh, let's have a look. So we're going inside Fort Cornwallis. Actually, we're not. It's 20 ringgits if you are non, I think my cad. Basically, if you're a tourist, it's 20 ringgits per person. All the reviews say it's a bit of a tourist trap and that don't waste your time coming here, which I could kind of get the vibe from just how it's set up. Seems like a big tourist trap. So you can see it from the outside, the wall, and maybe that's all you need to see. It was built by the uh, British East India Company. The, uh, from what I know about them, they were the ones who were responsible for all the colonization and everything that happened in India. So this wall, we're not gonna pay 20, 20 ringgits to uh, to kind of, uh, yeah, we're not paying 20 ringgits. Are we, Carolina? Budget Queen Carolina? No. <laughs> oh, this guy. <laughs> I quickly turned on the GoPro because uh, people love to take the motorbikes onto the pavements and just, it's a bit of a, a, bit of a weird one, right? Mm. It's uh, when we're walking on the pavements, we find it difficult to walk on the pavements because usually there's cars parked there, motorbikes. So we find ourselves walking onto the roads. And then when we do have clear pavements, we see motorbikes just cutting across. Bit of a strange one, but uh, I guess in Asia. When in Asia, what's also nice here in Georgetown is they actually, the traffic lights actually work and they have the beeping noises whereas when we were in uh, KL half the traffic lights didn't even work yeah. and vehicles have priority in the road so you have to really just go out onto the road and kind of it's quite dangerous so it's nice that they um it's a little bit easier to uh kind of get around here by walking i'm gonna get a drink from here Oop. there we go Oh, I think I'm going to go for 100 plus. Yes. Or should I go for the bottle? Maybe the bottle's better. Or what do you think? 
Which one's better, guys? Bottle? I think the bottle is hot. It's actually colder with a can. I can feel it's colder. Okay, see how much this one is. Oh, two ringgits. Beautiful. Two ringgits for the 100 plus. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Here's the cheapest uh, 100 plus we've I've had. Mm -hmm. Two ringgits, not bad. Right now we are in Chinatown here in Penang. So we just exited Little India, not too far. Now we're in Chinatown. I got my 100 plus. This is the cheapest 100 plus. Two ringgits. That's the cheapest one so far. And I want to say a big shout out to M World's Geb for buying us three drinks on our Buy Me A Coffee page. Really appreciate the support. Thank you for the drink. And uh, if you guys want to check out my Buy Me Coffee page, the link's in the description. You can buy some drinks there. Right now we're going through Chinatown. We hear there isn't too much to do here, but there's a lot of like kind of restaurants we could possibly eat at. More gold. Mm -hmm. It seems like the Chinese love their gold as well, as, as well as the Indians. I'm not sure why, but there is a lot of places that are just kind of shut here in Chinatown. Even on the right hand side, it's for sale, this restaurant. And uh, here, everything seems very kind of shut and closed down. I wonder if maybe the pandemic had something to do with that. Maybe it also is a Monday. Ah, it is a Monday, yes. Right now, guys, we are in the Cecil Street Hawker Center. We're surrounded by food places. It's very busy right now. Lots of people coming for their lunch. It has been super hot today. It's feeling quite weak. So we're just trying to figure out what we want to eat. There is many options. It's Charkway Tiao, Luxa. Let's go down here. So we have uh, lamb mi. What is this? A lot of corn and seafood. We've got duck meat kuei tiao. Ooh, that, looks, that looks good. I think I found uh, what I'm going to go for, but there's a queue, as you can see here. Let's wait in the queue. Small, uh, the duck kuei tiao. Uh, yes, over here, yes. Okay. 6.50. So it's self-service. I'm uh, not sure what self-service means. I think. Does that mean we uh, we take ourselves here? Okay. I think maybe she meant that uh, they can bring it to you, or you can just take it yourself. I think that's what she means. Self-service. I thought maybe we need to help ourselves to the food, but uh, it looks fine. <laughs> okay, guys. We have got the meat just here. You can see it's very hot. I'm trying to sneak it in there. Hello. <laughs> I think that's what we've gone for. It is very, very hot in here. The heat from the kind of stove here. And then Carolina's recording the meats. They're making the noodles and the, uh, the duck meats very quick. And now uh, we've got a a line behind us. Oh, he's adding all the meats, yeah. Putting on a little shed truck. Oh my god, it's so hot. Woo. It's like a pizza oven. Thank you. Oh, that looks beautiful. Delicious. Alright, now we're off to get Carolina's Luxa. Oh, ah, yes, the carrot, carrot juice. Ice. Uh, no sugar. Okay, thank you. Alright guys, we have got the duck kuei tiao here. And if you can hear in the background, there's a, like annoying speaker on repeat from one of the sellers. But uh, we're going to wait for Carolina. I've got my food here, but uh, Carolina's gone to get Luxa. And then I've got a carrot juice. Okay guys, so I've got my duck kuei tiao. You can see the pieces of duck here. I think you got uh, these are fish balls. I think these uh, over here. We got some more of this like kind of roasted turnip on there, and then we got some rice noodles. 
So I'm very happy with that because, uh, like I've said in many videos, not the biggest fan of seafood. There's a lot of seafood at this market, like carolinas. <laughs> Actually, it's not like a very typical seafood because laksa apparently is with the fish broth, mm -hmm. some veggies around, and uh, I don't know what else. So what's inside of here? Let's do you think? See. Some veg, lots of vegetables yeah, on lots top. Of, lots of vegetables onions. And some noodles like onions. this. Oh yeah, the all the like I don't know what kind of noodles they are. Mm. Are they just the rice noodles? Maybe. I think so. Yeah, but the, I think that they're very particular for laksa. I've got a carrot juice. Nice palate uh, cleanser. Mm. Honestly, guys. Oh, <laughs> there's a random guy shouting over there. There's like a speaker in the back just mumbling the same thing over and over again trying to sell something. Um, but it might not look like it on camera, but we're very hot right now. Like, almost like we were gonna. You felt like you were gonna faint, right? I was about to say that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And like, having a hot soups now. Yeah, we. Let's see if it helps. Most of the food here is pretty hot, so we can't really, uh, we can't really escape that. But as we were walking around the Hawker Center, we definitely felt really kind of weak. But we have got the food to try. Let's try out this duck with the noodles. Hmm. Hmm. Rice noodles are really soft. Lots of flavor from the uh, the broth yeah. in there. Mine, and too. Mine is a bit sweet. Yours is and sweet. Like, slightly fishy, a mm -hmm. bit sweet, but it complements. And I actually I can taste a lot of coriander as well. Coriander. Yeah. And the um, the duck meat has got a quite a meaty flavor, like duck usually has. Has a lot of flavor to the soup. Wow, that was really good. Mine is really good too. Have a bite, let's see what happens. <laughs> it's really good. It's good? Mm -hmm. You're happy? I'm very happy. So I think this is a fish ball. Never tried a fish ball before. I'm not a biggest seafood lover, as I've said multiple times on this channel. Does it smell fishy? Does it taste fishy? <laughs> yeah, it just tastes quite fishy. It's not too bad, it's a bit sweet. Mm. I'm so surprised because my laksa is mm -hmm. a bit... I don't like it, sorry. <laughs> I interrupted you, so... Yeah. <laughs> I don't like it at all. I'm surprised because my laksa is like sweet, fishy, but also a little bit uh, spicy. So... Oh, I think I was going to throw up at that point. That was disgusting. You want to try it? It's just because it's fishy. Let me try the fish ball. So I tried the fish ball, but it's very fishy. It was uh, not a good situation, but Carolina wants want to try it out. It is quite fishy, right? Mm -hmm. It is really fishy. It is, but like for the person that doesn't like fish. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. Um, but I've still got the, the kind of fishiness in my, uh, in my mouth, but a lot of people actually have commented, and friends as well, have said after like a year of eating fish, I'll start to like it, but I don't know guys, I think it's going to be a bit of a tricky one. I don't think, I'm willing to try new things, new foods, but I'll keep trying, but I don't know when I'm going to start loving seafood. But luckily with the duck kuei tiao, it's mostly uh, kind of meat and rice noodles. Mm. I'm just more of a meat guy. This has got, I think we need to add some chilies to it. But you got the meaty flavor, and then you got the kind of softness, sweetness of the rice noodles. And then we've got some spring onions inside of there with the, I think, roasted turnips. Let's try that out. I think some like tofu as well in there. Mm. Super delicious. So this is the first laksa in my life and as you can see there's a lot of ingredients, onions, some greens, uh, yeah, these laksa noodles and the fish broth is quite salty and quite sweet and spicy at the same time. So Is it quite fishy? Mm -hmm. A bit. A little bit, mm -hmm. yeah. So apparently you can't come to Cecil Hawker Centre without trying Mochi. 
Ah, it's like rice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mixed in with the peanuts, she's like spreading it around, like chopping it up. There we go. So we've got the merchie seller there, which is very nice. And then we've got the uh, the merchie here. Let me give this a go. Let's do it left-handed. So we just dip it in there. Mmm. Oh yeah. Really good. Really good. So it's like mochi. It's actually warm. I wasn't expecting it to be warm. Very peanutty. Super delicious. I'm gonna go for another one. You can see here it's it's like mochi, very wobbly. Oh yeah. Really good. So honest first impressions of Georgetown here in Penang. Uh, we think it's a little bit overrated, to be honest. Very touristy. Everywhere we're going, it's just tourist kind of ticket prices, entrance fees. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally agree. Like everyone is saying, oh, stroll through really beautiful streets, but actually <laughs> there's even no pavements because cars are uh, standing on the pavement so it's not easy actually to like really relax in the city and mm -hmm. feel like you're on the island and exactly like it's a Monday so maybe we've come at the wrong time but it's just constant traffic non-stop on the roads here and uh, we can't really walk on the pavement very easily because we end up just getting blocked off and then having to come onto the road anyway just bear in mind guys that this is our very first day here so we are here for another five days so I think we'll have a better grasp of you know what Georgetown is like and was there anything you else else you wanted to say Carolina we actually also can explore around Georgetown yeah like uh, in terms of nature in terms of how people actually live here because to be fair like in the city center we can see that everything is actually made for tourists it doesn't yeah. feel so authentic and, and I think we expected that, but coming from Ipo, it felt um, more authentic and genuine in, um, in Ipo. Um, and our first impressions, we enjoyed it a lot more than today. Uh, but like we said, we have a lot more days to come here. Comment, you know, if we've gone on the wrong route, if there's things we've missed out, please comment in the comment section and we will go and check that out whilst we're here. And we do upload these videos pretty much live to when we're there. We don't batch record them like a lot of YouTubers and then uh, upload them over months. Uh, so yeah, give us the feedback because maybe we're making a mistake, but we just want to be honest and uh, how we are feeling being here in Penang. Okay, let's go. So like the other tourists, we're trying to cross the roads here. It's not super easy. We find ourselves onto these roads and then we can't actually come onto the pavement. So I don't know if there's any kind of proper pedestrian system here in Georgetown, but with the amount of tourists that are here, you'd think it would be the case. Um, it is a Monday, so we've heard on the weekends it's a lot quieter in terms of traffic. Maybe we've come on the worst day, but that does really affect how we feel when there's just constant traffic everywhere you go. You're walking on the streets, you're right next to it, and uh, it's loud, there's a lot of pollution. So that's how we're feeling right now. Just gotta be honest. 